Today I thought we'd talk about knobs. There's a few questions I see come up on the forum again and again about using knobs. I'm going to try and cover a few of those things in this video and hopefully uh, solve some of those beginner questions. So this is the project we're going to end up with. and I'm just going to show you what it does and then we'll go through the process of building it. I've got three simple gains and we have this knob called master and if I move the master knob you can see it moves these knobs over here and these knobs on the simple gains. If I move one of these knobs over here you can see they're all linked together and again it moves the knobs on the simple gains. Uh, if I disable this button, the simple link button, now the knobs can be moved independently and the master knob has no effect. And if I link one of these knobs, it's now linked to the master. And I can link another one, and that's linked to the master and the third one. But if I turn the master one off, now the master is completely deactivated, even though the links are still enabled. And these can just be moved independently. And if I enable the simple link, then all three are ganged together again. And you'll notice the link buttons have been disabled but uh, they've been turned on, but they've been disabled from being clicked. And if I turn simple link off, you can see it turns those off as well. And if I re-enable the master, we're back to where we started. So this is the project we're going to end up with, and we'll take a few steps to get there and um, go on a journey through some of the things you can do with knobs on the way uh, to achieving this uh, final result. So we'll make a new project and get started. So this is a brand new project. Let's add a front interface. And we'll hide the API browser for now, just so we can see this interface a bit more easily. We'll go to our front end and we shall add one simple gain. And by default, it's called simple gain one. We're going to change that to be called simple gain zero. And that's to make it more loop friendly, which we'll deal with later on. Okay, so the very basics of using a knob. We right click and we click add a new slider. I know it's called a slider and we're talking about knobs, but if we add one, you'll see it adds a knob. The reason it's a slider, uh, even though it shows a knob, is because if we scroll down in the property editor and go to style, we can choose between knob, horizontal slider, vertical slider, which looks the same unless you change the dimensions, and a range slider. So we have a few choices of how the slider is going to look, but in the default configuration it looks like a knob and that's what we're going to work with. So I'll just delete that one and add a new one. Now if we want this knob to control this knob here on the simple gain, then we need to make sure our knob on the interface has the same range as this knob here. So let's just add our interface so we can see them both at the same time. So the range of our knob is zero to one by default. And we're going to need to change that to be minus 100 to, well, it could go all the way to plus 36, but we'll just have it stop at zero. So to change the range of a knob, we can come down here and we could actually enter the values for the minimum and the maximum. Uh, but for a decibel range such as this, there is actually already a built-in mode for that. So we just select under this one here, the mode, we can select decibel and it fills in all these details for us, the middle position, and uh, the min and max. And it also adds the suffix of db. So we'll hit compile on that. And now we can see that our knob goes from minus 100 to zero. So that's the first stage. Now we're going to link it to the gain knob. Now there's two ways we can link our control. And for a basic one-to-one -one link like this, we can just click on the control, go over here where it says processor ID, and select simple gain zero. And under parameter ID, we can select gain. And we hit compile. And now if we go back to the front end, our two knobs are linked together. So the knob on our interface will control the simple gain knob. However, if you move the simple gain knob, it won't affect the one on the interface. So this is a one-way relationship. So another way we can connect a knob to a control is using a control callback. 
and this is how you'll connect a lot of your controls together. So if we go back to the front interface, let's say we want our gain knob, instead of controlling this simple gain, we want it to control the gain slider up here for the master chain. So one way you might think to do that is to select in the processor ID, select master chain, and in the parameter drop down, select gain, same as we did before. So let's try that. So if we go to the front interface and move this, we'd expect it to move this slider in the same way it did for the simple gain, but it's not going to. You see it just jumps to minus 100. And so this is a trap for newbies because basically the slider up here doesn't actually have a range of minus 100 to zero. That's just its display range. I don't know why it's like this, but it's just the way it is. This is actually using what's called a gain factor. So what we need to do is we need to convert the value of our knob to a gain factor. And we can't do that using the parameter ID system. We have to use a custom callback. So the first thing we'll do is we'll, we'll remove this processor ID. We'll just um, click on the drop down menu and at the top there's a blank entry. Just click on that and it clears it out. And if we go back to the front end, you'll see that it's no longer connected to the gain slider up here. And then we need to get a reference to our container. And the container, if you save your project as an archive, this container will take on the name of the archive. So this archive I've saved um, is called tutorial. So my container is called tutorial. But I'm just going to right click on this and select create generic script reference. That copies the script reference to the clipboard, which I can then just control V to paste in here. So we've got a reference to the module. We also need to create a callback for the knob. So I'm going to right click on this and select create custom callback definition and paste that here. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to set the gain property of our uh, container and the container is called tutorial. So in fact, let's just rename this variable so we know what it is. We'll call it master container, uh, but it's still getting the container that's called tutorial. So master container dot set attribute. And then we need to tell it which attribute we want to set. And we can find that out from the module browser. So we'll go back to the front end. So here's the module browser. If you don't see that, because it is something you have to add as a custom element, go up here and click on this little button to uh, add an extra row and you'll get an empty row like this right click inside there and select module browser and it will add a module browser for you so in the module browser we're going to look for the container because that's the module we're working with and we're going to right click on it and we can see the parameters available again balance voice limit and kill fade time. So we're interested in gain and it's spelt with a capital G. That's the important thing. So we'll put master container dot gain with a capital G. And if we set it to value, which is the value of the knob, and we're getting that from the callback function that's been passed in. If we set it to value, it's just exactly the same as using the processor ID and parameter ID. So we know that won't work because we need to convert this to a gain uh, factor. And to do that conversion, there's actually a built-in function. So we'll have a quick look in the API browser. And if I type gain factor in the search, we've got two functions. One is get decibels for gain factor. And we've already got decibels because that's the range of our knob. Um, the other function is get gain factor for decibels. So that's the one we want to use. So we'll put this in here. Engine dot get gain factor for decibels and the value can go in there. And I'll hit F5 on that. We'll go back to the front end. And now this knob controls the range of this slider perfectly. Okay, so that was just a demonstration of um, how you can use this gain factor thing. I just wanted to sort of sneak that in there, but we're not actually going to make use of this master container anymore in this tutorial. So we'll just delete this master container and we'll delete this bit here. We'll leave the knob callback for now because I'm going to demonstrate something else. So using the callback, we can also connect up to our simple gain, of course. So we'll right click on there, get a script reference. 
there's our simple gain zero. We'll do the same thing we did for the master container. Simple gain zero dot set attribute. Simple gain zero. And again, we can find out what the attribute is from the module browser. We'll just scroll down to simple gain. And again, it's called gain with a capital G. And we can just pass in the value. We don't have to do any conversion this time. So there we go. Now we've got this knob on the interface controlling the simple gain, uh, gain knob once again. So that's just how we had it before when we were doing it with the processor ID. So now you've seen two ways to make a knob control one other knob. So we can use parameter ID or we can uh, script a callback. Now, if you want to control two knobs, you can't do it using processor ID and parameter ID, at least not directly. There are workarounds, but you can't really do it this way because there's only one parameter ID and one processor ID box. You can only assign one knob to one other knob. So you have to use a control callback if you want to control more than one knob. And here's another important thing. If you assign a processor ID, which we'll do now. If you assign a knob to be controlled or to control something else with processor ID, then that knob's callback will never trigger. So if I go into the callback and I write console.print value and I move the knob, that callback is never going to trigger because we're using a processor ID. So you've got to be aware that you can only use processor ID on its own uh, you can't use it alongside a callback. So if you need to control more than one thing, then make sure you first of all disable the processor ID assignment. You clear that out and use a callback instead. You can't have them both active at once. Okay, so we're going to use our one knob to control two simple gain modules now. So we'll add another simple gain. We'll call this simple gain one. And the reason I'm naming them this way is to make them array friendly and loop friendly and we'll get onto that in a little while. So we'll grab a reference to this one, right click and get generic script reference and paste that in here. And then inside our knob callback, we can duplicate this line. And instead of it being simple gain zero, we can change that to simple gain one and the same here. And if we hit F5, we can go back to the front end and our knob on the front end is now controlling two knobs on the back end. So that's a one to two relationship. And again, it's a one way relationship. Controlling these has no effect on the knob on the interface. So what we're doing here is we're coming into the callback that the knob is, um, when we move the knob, it triggers this callback and passes in the knob's value. We're assigning the, that value to simple gain zero, and we're also assigning it to simple gain one. So really straightforward, um, nothing too clever there. And we can take this one stage further. We can add another simple gain, call this simple gain two, and again, create a generic script reference and paste that in here, duplicate this line, change one to two, and now we have one knob controlling three different simple gains. Now, if you do want to add more simple gains or other effects, they don't have to be simple gains. I'm just using these for this demonstration. If you do want to add more, then with this system, every time you add another effect, you have to add another line here and another line here. And for three like this, it's not so bad. But if you've got 10, then that's an extra 20 lines of code. And we want to avoid that. And luckily we were smart and thought ahead and we made these, uh, we, we named these simple gains zero, one, and two, so we can grab them in a loop and put them into an array and we can reduce the number of lines of code we have and also make our code more flexible to handle any number of uh, effects. So let's do that. So we'll create an array. We'll call it simple gain. And we'll create a loop, a standard for loop. And it's going to go from zero to three. And in this loop, 
we don't need to use curly braces because we only have uh, we're only going to have one line in here if you are writing a loop or an if statement and you're going to have more than one line in that loop or if statement then you must use curly braces and put your statements between the curly braces if in doubt use curly braces but in this case we don't need them so we're going to write simple gain and we're going to use the push function to push elements into the array and we're going to use this function that we've already got here synth dot get effect synth synth dot get effect simple gain and we're not going to write zero or one or two on the end instead we're going to stick the value of i onto it and we know i is going to be zero one or two because our loop goes from zero to three so we'll do that so we've reduced our three lines of code to um three lines of code in this case we haven't saved any lines of code but if we were to add say let's say we had 10 simple gains all we'd have to do now is change this number to be 10 and we're still only using three lines of code but we can handle a great number of simple gains so that's where we're gaining efficiency here now we're going to do the same in our knob callback so i'll just comment this out for now and we'll add another loop for i equals zero and instead of putting i is less than three we'll just grab the number of elements that we have in in our simple gain array and that means if in the future we did change this number here we wouldn't also have to change it down here so we'll just um, put in the name of our array simple gain and we'll get the length parameter the length property of our array i plus plus and then instead of having these three lines of code we now only need one line of code so where on, on this line here we're using the name of the effect simple gain zero which is actually it isn't just the name of the effect that's also the name of the variable we were storing a reference to that effect inside and now we're storing that reference inside our array so we'll put the name of our array simple gain that's now how we spell it simple gain and the element is going to be indexed by i zero one or two and then it's the same thing set attribute simple gain i dot gain and then value so in this case those two lines of code replace these three so we'll delete those and again if we had more simple gains we wouldn't need to add any extra lines of code so we'll hit compile there hope there's no errors we've got an error line 10 okay i've put a comma here that should have been a semicolon hit f5 all is well okay let's go to the front end so now if i move this knob it should move all three of these again so exactly the same thing and i'll just demonstrate if i had two more simple gains here and just make sure they're named appropriately for our loop friendliness so that'll be three and that will be four so by loop friendliness i mean the start at zero that's pretty much it you, you just number whatever your um whatever the things are that you're looping whether it's components or effects or modulators you just number them from zero upwards and that way in your loop you just start counting from zero and you can just append the number onto whatever it is you're grabbing so that's what i mean by loop friendly uh, so we've got five of these now so if i change that to five nope not 35 five and i hit f5 and we'll go to the front end so when i move this now it will move all five of those and i haven't had to add any extra lines of code i've literally just changed that value so that's just a really efficient way to uh, to write this so now we're going to go back to having three simple gains okay what i'd like to do now is i'd like to add an individual knob for each of our simple gains so instead of having one knob we'll have three knobs so um we'll leave this code we've got because we're going to reuse some of it so we'll definitely be reusing the part where we're grabbing the simple gains i'm not sure how we'll reuse the knob just yet but we will reuse this knob um for now i'm going to put this knob over here out the way and in its place we shall add a new one and i'm going to call this knb gain zero and we're going to set its mode to decibel 
and I'll just change its text to gain zero. And I'm going to click on the control on the canvas. I'm going to press control D and that will create a duplicate. And Highs has kindly named this duplicate for us can be gain one. So it's incremented it and I'm going to hit control D again. And now we have three knobs and it's named this one can be gain two. So it's given them loop friendly names and it's done that because the first one we created had the number zero at the end of its ID. And we'll just straighten these up. And I'll just change this text. So now we've got three separate knobs. And if we wanted to link these to the three simple gains, we could do that through the processor ID system as we did at the beginning. So we'll have that one there. This one here. And this one connected to there. And we'll go back to the front end. And now each of these knobs is controlling a separate simple gain. So that's part of how you, you'd create a basic mixer, for example. Uh, but we want to do something more fancy because we want to link these controls together. or We want to have the option to link them together. We are going to have to use a callback to, uh, to handle these. Uh, so let's go back to our um, interface. So we'll take this knob we had earlier, and this is now going to become our master knob that's going to be in charge of all the other knobs. So we'll call this can be master. So that's our master knob. And we need to get script references to each of these three knobs so that we can use them within our script. So we'll do that using a loop because again they have loop friendly names so just write a comment here this is going to be k and be gain we'll create a an array to store them in and we'll add a loop exactly the same as we did up here i is less than three i plus plus k and be gain dot push so we're going to push the components into the array so that's going to be content dot get component component and the components are called can be gain and we'll use that plus i technique so now we've got references to all of our uh, our three knobs these three into this can be gain array but we can see in the value it's an object and those objects are references to each of these knobs. Okay, so back to our master knob. So that's going to be up here, we'll call it can be, can be master is what we called it. So I'm just putting a comment there so we know what it is. So this section of code, we can uncomment now and we'll do some stuff in here, but basically we need to change the name of this. So it's no longer knob one, it's now can be master. And we'll change the name of the callback as well. Can be master control. Can be master con. Uh, sorry, the other control part in there. Uh, yeah. Okay. So if I hit a five, all should be well. Yeah. And if we go back to the front interface, this knob is still controlling all three of them. And these knobs are still acting independently. So the, these knobs, even though we haven't put a control callback, they're still connected by parameter ID. So that's why they're still um, doing what they were doing before. Without writing a callback for these knobs, we can actually get the master knob to control them. So if we go into the master knobs callback, so in this loop, what we're going to do now, currently we're actually just setting the simple gain uh, to the value of the master knob. So we're setting all the simple gains to the value of the master knob. But what we actually want to do now is set the knobs over here to the value of the master knob. So we'll comment this out for now. And I'll just move it down a few lines. And what we're going to do now in this same loop, but we'll change this instead of being simple gain, it's now going to loop around the KNB gain array, which has the same number of elements. We've still got three, but it's just for clarity. We're going around the we're looping through each of these three knobs now rather than each of the uh, simple gain effects. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to set each knob, we're going to set its value to the value of the master knob. So that's this value here that's being passed in. And I'm going to hit compile. And now when I move the master knob, it's going to move each of those knobs here. But one thing we're going to see, let me show you this. You'll see that it doesn't update the simple gains. And that's because we haven't done anything to update the simple gains in here. We've disabled this where we were setting the simple gains. And instead, all we're doing is we're setting the value of these knobs. So there's two ways we can handle this, but either way, we need to add an extra line to our um, for loop. So that means we need to have curly braces because you can't have more than one line in a for loop without curly braces around them. So the first way we can do it is we can just take our line we've got here and put it back in there and we're just doing what we we're doing before we were, so we were setting the simple gains and now we're setting the knobs and we're setting the simple gains from this master control now that's the first way to do it but it's not really the best way because this master knob is the master of these gain knobs it's not it, it shouldn't know about the simple gains it's got one job and its job is to control these knobs and it's the responsibility of these knobs to control the simple gains. So we shouldn't really do that here. So I'm just going to put that back outside the loop and I'm just going to comment it out again. So the reason I'm commenting it is because we're going to reuse it later on. Okay, so what we're actually going to do is we're going to tell these, these knobs, we're going to say, hey, your, your value's been updated, but we need you to pass that information on to um, the simple gains that you're controlling, whatever you're linked to via parameter ID or through a callback or whatever, we need you to do your thing now that we've updated the value. And to do that, we call, we call on the knob again, put I in there and we call its changed function. So that's the change function of each of the knobs. Hit compile, go to the front end. And now everything works beautifully. The master knob controls these knobs, these sub knobs, and each of these sub knobs controls its simple gain. And you can see these can be used independently or with the master knob. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to add an on off button for our master knob. So we're just going to add a button. And we'll call this um, BTN master. Makes sense. And we'll call it master uh, we'll give it the text master. Yep, that should do. Uh, yeah. And it didn't update the ID for some reason. I'll just put that in again, BTN master. And we're going to get a reference to this button. We don't need a callback for it. We just need a reference to the button. I'm going to stick it here. And just put a comment there just to make it helpful. Uh, you'll notice, by the way, that I keep deleting these vars because it keeps making const vars when I paste things in. And the var is superfluous. It's not required. So I get rid of the var because I don't see any point in keeping code I don't need. So I get rid of that. But you can leave the var in if you want. Um, so we've got a reference to the button. So all we have to do now in our master knobs callback is check if this button is on or off. So when the knob is moved, we say to the button, are you on or are you off? And if he says he's on, then we do the thing. We change these knobs. If he says he's off, then we don't uh, do anything. So we're going to check in here. We're going to say if BTN master, and that's this variable here we're checking, dot get value e equals one. So we're saying, do you equal one? Are you on? Uh, we don't have to put one there. We can put true. It, it doesn't really matter. And in fact, we don't even need to put anything because this will... Um, just check by default if the value is one or not. And if it is, we're going to put some curly braces around this for loop. And if it's one, it will do whatever is in the curly braces, which is uh, control our other knobs. So let's see that in action. So the button is off. So nothing happens. Let's uh, just make that a bit bigger. There we go. So nothing happens. The button is off. These knobs still do their own individual thing when they're moved. And if the button is enabled, now everything's linked together nicely. Off, on. Okay, so now let's add individual link buttons for each of our, um, our sub knobs. 
so that we can choose which knob the which knobs the master knob is controlling so we need to add three more buttons so i'm actually just going to move this button up there to be near the master and now we'll add three new buttons and we'll call these i'm going to hit f2 here and that brings up the um, id editor we're going to call this btn link zero and you can see where I'm going with this. When I have um, a button ending in zero, it means that I'm going to make it loop friendly. So we have another one and it's automatically named one and another one automatically named two. And we're going to grab references to each of these link buttons. And yep, we're going to use a loop to do that. So we'll put this after the gain knobs. We'll call it btn link const btn link is an array of course and we'll have another loop for i equals zero i is less than three i plus plus btn link dot push content dot get component btn link and append i to the end of it so same deal as before so now we've got a reference to each of these link buttons stored in an array. So btn link zero is going to be this one, btn link one will be this one, and btn link two should be that one. Now, where do we want the action to take place? We don't need anything to happen specifically when we click these link buttons. Everything takes place when we move the master knob. So when we move the master knob, we're checking if the master button is enabled. And when we move the master knob, we're gonna check which of these is enabled as well. And we're going to do that inside the for loop. So this is our master knob callback. And inside here, inside the loop, we're going to have an if statement and we're going to check if the link button for I, and I is also controlling the knob. So that means we're saying, is the link button for this knob, whichever knob we're looping over, is it active? So if, if btn link I dot get value. And again, curly braces because we've got more than one line inside the if statement. Let's get rid of that extra space there. So I'd hit F5 and we'll go to the front end. And I move the master, does nothing. Click the master button, still does nothing. These knobs still do their own thing. But now I can link particular controls. So if I click this one, gain zero is now linked to the master these ones still independent. If I click this one, gain two is now linked to the master as well. But if I turn the master off, none of them are linked. So the master button is still the master button. And of course, if all three of them are active, then all three are linked. So that's really nice. Um, we're almost where we want to be with this. One last thing we're going to do is we're going to add an option so that when, um, we can link all three of these together so that when you move one of these by clicking on it, it will move the others. So we're going to gang them together. And in order to do that, we are going to have to use callbacks for these knobs instead of parameter ID. So the first thing we're going to do is select all of these knobs and turn off the processor ID and parameter ID and hit compile. So these knobs won't do anything anymore. They'll still be controlled by the master, but they're not actually doing anything themselves. And now we need to create callbacks for these knobs. So again, we're going to use our loop that we've got here. So we've already got the KNB gain section of our script, which refers to these knobs, KNB gain 0, 1, and 2. And all we need to do now is uh, we've got them in an array, but we're going to assign a callback to them. And they're all going to share the same callback. So the callback is going to be called on KNB gain control. Now, if you've read my um, coding standards guide I wrote for highs, and I'll put a link to that in the video description. If you've read that, and if you haven't, you should, um, you'll see that I have applied a standard way of naming uh, control callbacks. And this is taken based on how highs does it automatically, which is to add the word on to indicate as a callback. So like on init, on note, on controller, etc. And then the name of the control, so can be gain, in this case it's the name of the array, 
and then the word control. So, you know, it's a control callback. So it's nice and standard, and it means you don't have to come up with the name of a function. You have a standard way of doing it, and it means anybody else looking at your code knows exactly what that thing is. They know it's a, con it's a callback because it says on, it's a control callback because it says control, and they knows that somewhere there's a variable called can be gain, which refers to a control of some description. And uh, yeah, I'll post a link to that. But it'll just give you some sort of guidelines about how you can uh, lay out your code and keep things neat and tidy. Um, so after that little um, side street, let's go back to what we were doing. So now we've got a callback, and this callback is going to be used by all of the knobs. So we need to assign it to the knobs. So to assign a callback to a knob, we've seen you just um, do uh, like can be gain dot set control callback. Um, but we've got three knobs. We're not going to write out three lines, of course. We're going to put it in this loop that we already have, and this loop only has one line in it at the moment. We're going to add an additional line, so that means curly braces are required. So can be gain. We're going to use the i iterator as the index. Set control callback. And our callback is called on can be gain control and finish that off with a semicolon. So now all of these knobs are linked to this callback. So when you move this one, it calls this callback. When you move this one, it calls the same callback. When you move this one, it calls the same callback. And depending on which one you move, it will change the value of this component. So if you move the first one, then component will be a reference to the first knob. If you move the second one, component will be a reference to the second knob. And if you move the third one, component will be a reference to the third one. And value will be the value of whichever knob you've moved. So we want to know which knob has been moved. So the way we can do that is we can check where component is in this can be gain array. Um, so if it's the first component, it's going to be zero. If it's second component, one, third component, two. And to do that, we'll use the index of function. You've seen me use this a lot before, but um, we'll create a local variable. Local variables are what we use inside inline functions. Call it index, it's going to equal the array name, can be gain, and then we're going to use the index of function, and then component. And we'll just console out the index so we can see what it is. So we'll clear that. So when we move the first one, the index is going to be zero because it's going to search in the can be gain array to see where we pushed this component, the component being the first knob, and it's going to have an index of zero. The second one will be an index of one, third one an index of two. So we can see that that works. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that each of these knobs is linked back up to its simple gain, just in the most basic form. Um, so as I said, we were going to reuse this line of code I commented out, so let's cut that now. We're going to take that and move it down to our new callback function. And instead of using I, we're going to use index because we're not in a loop here. So we don't have an I variable, but we do have our index. So we'll just replace that with index and we don't have to change value because value is a standard um, uh, variable name for the callback. So that's just the same. And we'll hit F5. And now these should be linked back up to where they were before and the master knob should work as it did before. So we're kind of back to where we are, but now we're using a control callback instead of parameter ID. So now we're going to add a button that enables the ganging of these three knobs together. So we'll add a new button. And we'll give it the ID gang. And we'll set the text to gang and hit compile on that. And again, we'll grab a reference to this. Um, just a reference, we don't need the callback, at least not yet. And we'll put that here, btn gang. And then we're gonna check the value of gang inside our the, the callback for each of these knobs because it's these knobs that are going to respond to the gang button. So if gang's enabled, moving any of these knobs will move the other two. 
So we'll put a function here, we'll say if btn gang dot get value. So if it's enabled, um, actually we'll put if it's disabled. So we could put equals zero, that would say if it's disabled. Or what we can do is just at the beginning put an exclamation mark. That's the not operator. So that's saying if it's not enabled. And we'll wrap what we've currently got inside curly braces. So if it's not enabled, it's just going to do what it was already doing, which is just controlling the simple gain modules independently and the knobs aren't affecting each other. But if it is enabled, so else, so it is enabled, we're going to run a loop and change each of these knobs to update to the value of whichever knob was moved. So I'll have a loop, i equals zero, i is less than um, knb gain dot length, i plus plus. Curly braces, so you know that we're going to have two things in here. So the first thing we're going to do, and this is very much like what we had for the master where we've got two things in here, we're going to update the value of the knobs, so all of them, so even the one that's trigger the callback. It doesn't matter. There won't be uh, any sort of cyclic reference um, issues. So um, recursion, there won't be any recursion issues. That's the word I was looking for. Um, so can be gain i dot set value equals the value of the knob that was moved. So this value that's being passed in there. Uh, so that will be the first part. So if I enable gang, now all these, no matter which one we move, they all move together. So you can see that here but it's not updating the simple gains. And that's because it's coming into this part, it's coming into our else uh, statement, and we're not updating the simple gains there, we're doing that in this part. So we also need to update the simple gains. So again, we'll copy this line of code, we'll paste it in here, but we'll change index to i. And hit F5, and now we should have the action we want. There we go. And if we disable the gang in, then they're all independent. Unless we move the master control. In which case they're all linked together. Now there's one slight issue with this, which we will address in a moment. And that is if I hit the gang control, everything is fine. If I unlink one of these, everything is fine. If I move the master. Um, so we have a problem. The problem is that this one here isn't linked. But yet when I move the master, it's still moving. And that's because of the ganging feature. So if I turn gang off, it's not happening. So what we need to do is when gang is enabled, we just need to make sure all of these link buttons are enabled as well. So that it makes sense to the user. It doesn't actually make a difference to the functionality. They're all going to be linked. But so it makes sense to the user because the user will be confused by that. They'll be like, well, it's not linked. So why is the master controlling it? So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that they're all always enabled whenever the gang is enabled and we're actually going to um, disable the buttons. So what I mean by that is their value will be one, but they won't be clickable. So we'll be setting this um, enabled property to false. So it can't be clicked, but it's still turned on. So where we'll do this is we'll create a callback for our gang button. And you know what it's going to be called because I told you about the system I'm using. Oh look, we've got a var there. Let's get rid of that. Inline function on btn gang control component value. So there's our callback for the gang button. We just need to actually assign it to the button. Ah, oh, what am I doing? Don't need that. Um, set control on btn gang control. Okay, so this button should now trigger this callback. We can test that with our old friend console print. So that works as expected. So what we need to do now is when this button is uh, triggered, when this callback is triggered, we want to set these um, buttons, these link buttons, to the value of the gang button. So if the gang is enabled, we enable these buttons. If it's disabled, we disable these ones. And you can guess how we're going to do that. Yep, we're going to use a loop. So um, we'll write for loop for i equals zero. 
And since we're looping through the three buttons, which are stored in this btn link array, we will use that array's length, btn link dot length. Even though I'm using these length parameters everywhere, the value is um, of the length is always going to be three because we're using three everywhere. But it's a good idea to reference the array, the, the length of the array you're actually going to use in case in other circumstances you have different uh, numbers of values in each array. I plus plus curly braces so we're going to have two lines of code and I'm going to show you two ways to do this and th this way is the slightly less efficient way the next one will be slightly more efficient so btn link i so each of these link buttons dot set value and we want to set it to the value of the gang button and since this is the gang buttons callback we know that value represents the value of the gang button so we can just put value in there i'll hit f5 on that we've got an error uh btn link i dot set value line 63 doesn't recognize set value why is that oh i missed out something i is less than there we go so now if i click the gang button it will enable all the link buttons and if I disable it, it will disable them all. And I shouldn't really use the word enable and disable here. I should say it will turn them on and it will turn them off. It will set their value to one. It will set their value to zero. Uh, but we still have the problem if the gang button's enabled, the user can manually turn them off and still get confused about um, why they're all linking together. So what we have to do is make sure that we disable the buttons for being clicked so we'll call btn link i dot set and we're going to set that enabled property and when the button is on we want enabled to be false and when the button is off we want enabled to be true so we're sort of flipping the value to invert a button you can just put one minus the value of the button and that will invert it so now when i click this button on all of these buttons will turn on but they'll be disabled so now I can't click on them. So now the ganging and the master make sense. And now when I turn this button off, all the link buttons will go off and they'll all be re-enabled. So now I'm going to show you the slightly more efficient way to write this. So, I mean, this it's going to be the same number of lines of code. There's nothing in that but it will be a better way of writing it. Um, so we're actually going to use a different type of loop. So what we're using here is the for loop. This is the standard for loop. And this iterates with a, a variable and it goes from one number, in this case zero, to another number, in this case three, the number of buttons. And, oh, well, actually it's one less than three, so it's uh, two. So it goes from zero to two, it runs through three values, and it gives us i. Um, and the only reason we're using I is to get a reference to one of these buttons. We, we're not using it anywhere else. It's not like um, in one of these loops, for example, where we're using I to append to a control name. Um, we're, we're not using it at all like that. All we're using it for is to get a pull a value from an array. Well, we can use another loop called the for in loop, which will actually just pull the values out of the array, the array directly. So I'll show you how we do that we'll comment this out so this loop and um, if, if you look at my coding standards document you'll see some uh, information about this but this loop is used when you don't need that array iterator you don't need to know the number you just want a particular value from an array so we'll write for and we need a variable which is going to be used to store whatever we're pulling out of the array. So in this case, we're pulling references to buttons out of the btn link array. The convention in JavaScript is to use x as the variable name. You can also just write any variable you want. You can write button. Um, I recommend you use x or you can use um, b for button or l because the link button, something sort of relevant. And if you've got nested loops, obviously you can't call them all x. So something relevant but don't bother writing out a long name don't write button like i say you can use it but don't bother because that's why write that many characters just write x in and um then you write what you're searching in so we're pulling x out of the btn 
link array. So we want X and X is in the BTN link array. So this will go through the array and each on each iteration, it will grab a reference from the array and those references are to each of the buttons. So in this case, if I write X the first time through, X is going to be this button. The second time through, it's going to be that button. And the third time through, it'll be this button. So in this case, we do X dot set value is value x dot set enabled is one minus value so exactly the same as we're doing in the for loop here the standard for loop but instead of um, using a for loop with the iterator which we don't need we're using a for in loop and you can also think of x like this if we uncomment the for loop for a moment inside our for loop we could just write local x equals btn link i and then again here, we could replace this with X and that could be X. So it's kind of like doing that, except instead of having to pull out the values from the array manually on a separate line, it's doing it for us with the for in uh, loop. So hopefully that makes sense. I might make another video about that going into it in um, a little more detail. Uh, let me know in the comments if that's, uh, if, if you're sort of okay with for in loops. So we'll hit compile there, we'll do the same thing. So they're disabled and now they're enabled. So that's it, let's go to our front interface again and we'll hit the gang button, they're all chained together, they're all controlling these. We'll hit the link button, so this one's linked over. This one's linked, click the master, now none of them are connected to the master because master's disabled. Click the gang button, they'll still work. Master won't do anything, but they'll still work. And now they're all just completely independent. And uh, that's the example complete. So this was obviously a contrived example, just to show you a load of things you can do with knobs and how you can link them and interact with them. Uh, there's more complicated things, like if you want to link two knobs that have totally different ranges, that's um, it's a bit more tricky, but you can do that. Same kind of thing, you've just got to convert the ranges inside the callback. Um, obviously you can link controls to things other than simple gains. I was just using these for the uh, demonstration. So I hope you found this helpful. If you do have any questions or comments, please let me know. I'll be posting this project on my Patreon page for my tier three supporters. If you'd like access to um, this project, the project files, and the code I've written in this video, you can find that at my Patreon page, link in the video description. I also post stuff there every week, um, podcasts, little tips, hints, blog posts, and extra videos, of course. So if you would like to uh, support my channel and get access to little extra bits, uh, you can head over there. Links in the video description. So that's all I've got for you today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.